Good afternoon. <laughs> well, it's going to be a balmy afternoon. <clears throat> if, it's any, if it's any hope, the fog is slowly moving in this direction. So hopefully, after an hour or so, you'll get some shade. Meanwhile, we're delighted you're here at the Forest Theater. It's been closed, as most of you know, for about two and a half years while it was being repaired and some minor adjustments in things like the ground your feet are on used to be dirt. Now it's cement, which is a little better. Um, there's just a couple of uh, housekeeping rules, which most of you will not have a problem with. Uh, if you smoke, <coughs> you have to go way down to the street. Oh, excuse me. Hello? I'll tell them. Turn them off. Uh, the only other thing, of course, is I'd say no flash photography, except nobody uses flash photography anymore. So we're just delighted that you're here to see the bars presented by the Forest Theater Guild. Have a good time. It's all right, keep the music going. You know, there's one small detail that I forgot to mention. This afternoon, the role of Arietti is being played by Alexandra Roden, uh, and I think you're really going to enjoy her performance. Thank you. Shadows, is there a spider out today? Hiding, 
hiding, hiding in the shadows. Is there a hungry cat at play? I'm waiting, yes, waiting, just waiting to select the essential. They'll not miss the inconsequential watching and waiting and hiding. You make no sound at all, you're only inches tall. But when you're running and grabbing and oh so gaily nabbing, if they should see you or you take a fall, you merely press yourself against the wall. Let's sing a song for the borrower's life. Hiding's the life, waiting's the life. Sing a song for the borrower's life. Hiding, yes, that's the life for me. Watching, watching, watching from the shadows. Was that a rat or something fake? disposition, young man. Oh, oh, no, don't tease the boy, Eustace. <laughs> Silence, Mr. C. Now, boy, I don't tolerate any foolishness, especially by the likes of you. But you see... Now move I... along, lad. Let's get out of this god-awful weather. You heard him, boy, but first wipe your feet before you come in. But I did, Miss Cranford. Don't argue. Mind your manners. I have enough to worry about caretaking this house. Now, move along and go upstairs and uh, take your nap. You're still sickly. And your mother, God rest her rebellious soul, would want you to get better. Yes, ma'am. Oh, see, he could be polite. Why not give the lad a little leeway? Keep your opinions to yourself, husband. Sick boys need too much attention. What? What is it? I know I laid that 
silver spoon right here. <laughs> I was polishing it. Strange. Oh, maybe we better call the police. Or better yet, the exterminator. <laughs> and why would I do that? Because maybe it was took by one of those uh, little venom you think you see. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Mr. C. Very funny. <laughs> well, I did see something. Maybe, Vermin. Whatever it was, it sent shivers up and down my spine. Yeah. Well, maybe we can get the pastor to pray them away. <laughs> Exterminator! That would be bad. Gotta watch me step to one and give her any reason to be mad. I pity that lad dealing with those two, but a boy in our midst. Sickly is he. Mm, a boy. Sick or not, boys are trouble. It's time to lay low a bit. Human beings can't live with them. Can't live without them. Dear diary, I'm running out of things to write about. Papa goes off borrowing. Mama stays home worrying and I gaze out my window. Well, it's actually great, but it's my window to what's outside. Ariete? Ariete, put down that diary and come help me. Yes, Mama, I'm coming. See, diary, more of the same. There's a world outside of my window.
you're still dreaming and not thinking and not helping. I'm sorry, Mama. Hmm. Your father's late, and it's all my fault. Oh, I wish I hadn't had what? It's that cup you broke. But, Mama, that was days ago. I was truly sorry. I know, I know. It's not you, it's me. It's not the breaking that matters. It's what I said to your father afterwards. Uh, put a little of that cut-up carrot in the soup, hmm? <laughs> Up there, I said. The china service and the doll's house and the old nursery. But I don't see anything bad in that. Oh, the doll's house sits up on a table. You have to climb up on the curtain. I don't like it when he does that. It scares me. Papa knows what he can do. No, yeah, still, it's that curtain. Oh, you know what, Mama? Hmm. I could climb a curtain. Oh, with all your energy, I have no doubt. But that is a man's work. But I could, I could. I know I could climb a oh, curtain. Oh, could you now? Oh, Papa, you're back and safe. <laughs> and why wouldn't I be? And what's all this about your climbing curtains? Oh, just girlish nonsense. Show us what's in the bag. Now, now, my love, don't rush the fun of it. Ah. Everybody sit. <laughs> mm. Now, my lovely ladies, shall we see what's in the bag? <laughs> Woohoo! hoo oh, It's beautiful. <laughs> Much nicer than the one that broke. Mrs. Cranford is fit to be tied about this. <laughs> oh, we can use that for our soups. <laughs> oh, there's more. Huh. Ooh. <gasps> For me? <laughs> Papa, I need a new one very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm being hugged to death. <laughs> oh, Papa, what would we do without those human beings upstairs? <sighs> not much, my dear. Not much. Indeed, my love. Indeed. Like bread is for butter. Like steering's for rudder. Like matches for fire. Without them, there's no telling where we'd be. Not you and you and me. Like a honeybee is for petals. Yes. Like water is for kettles. Very good. Like steam is for rice. Like scratchings for lice. <laughs> There is great perplexity for you and you and me. We borrow the things they have plenty of. Their bits and their pieces make many of the things that we wouldn't have any of underneath the floorboards. Like a cozy's for teapots, like mittens for small tots, <laughs> like clocks are for late ones, like minnows to bait <laughs> some. Human beings are for borrowers. The borrowers need the beans, and without them, what a dreary life there'd be for you and you. And dangerous, it's true. If they weren't here, I'd die of fear. I don't know what we do. Human beings are for borrowers. The borrowers need the beans. And without them, there'd be no life fit for me. The borrowers need the beans. For a borrower's life. <laughs> now, off to your room. Try out your new pencil. Yes, Papa. <laughs> what is it, Pod? Oh, don't worry. Ariette, you won't go off borrowing. She's just full of turning 16. You missed the problem, my love, and that's because I haven't told you. Told me what? A boy's come to visit. A what? what? 
a sickly boy, <gasps> but boys are clever. One false step and he'll search us out. Oh, what are you saying? Are you suggesting? It's no good, Pod. I can't. I won't emigrate. Well, no one's asked you to yet. To live outside like Uncle Hendreary, Aunt Loopy, and Cousin Birdie in a badger set all among the earthworms. It's two fields away above the spinney. Oh, nuts. That's what they eat. And berries. I wouldn't wonder if they eat mice. You've eaten mice yourself. Oh, it's all drafty and all that fresh air and the children growing up wild. Oh, a boy. Think of Arietti. A boy. Yes. A boy, huh? Oh, ha, ha, what do boys know? Huh? Huh? Ah, what are we to do? It's the end of everything. My home, my beautiful home, with the last borrowers in this house, and now I'll have to go live outside. Easy now, don't rush the problem. Circumstances change. Yes, but uh, a boy? Yes. Now. Oh, remember Eglatina and the cat? Yes, I do, but that was her parents' fault. You can't hide the dangers of the world from your children. Mm, I can't. I won't emigrate. Well, first things first. We lay low and see what develops. But <laughs> we have plenty of supplies. The boy could just be visiting for a night or so. <sighs> a boy. I know, I know, but we'll snuggle in nice and cozy until he leaves. It'll be all right, I promise. You said he'll find us. Well, only if we let him. Oh. Hush now, Homily. Uh, we won't let him. Pod, I love our home. I do miss our friends, mm. the overmantles and the bell pools, <laughs> and Hendreary and Loopy and Cousin Bernie. <sighs> so do I, my love, so do I. They left so fast. Well, Pickens just got slim. They had to emigrate. Why were they so impatient? You said for them to wait. I know, I had one of me feelings. You must trust me feelings. Oh, I trust your feelings. Look what happened last time. Out they go, and in comes all that Sophie and the awful cramp girls. Still, we did get everything we need. You were right, Pod. They were wrong. Oh, it's, it's the chances you take. Still, when it comes to emigrating, I didn't want to then, and I don't want to now. Still. Huh. Still. Remember? Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember a time not so long ago when the house would be filled with dozens and dozens of borrowers. Oh, I remember a time everything was just so we had friends who would visit with chill. Supplying the beer Oh, I remember
giving me clean floor. Oh, my. Aren't we in a mood? <laughs> well, the boy's been bedridden for the past two days. Why so glum? Well, I don't see you waiting on him. I'm the one that has to walk up and down those stairs, serving him and old Aunt Sophie. <laughs> well, he's getting up and seems fit. Fit? Well, don't think he won't be asking for something or other more work for me. Well, let him be. Let me be. Why don't you send him on a vermin hunt? Maybe he can spot those little creatures you think you see. <laughs> don't mock me, Mr. C. I saw them. <laughs> I'll put these away. Good. Do something useful. <laughs> There she goes again, knocking about, not caring a bit how that noise might affect anyone else, namely us. Oh, it's annoying, but I can tolerate it. Oh. This is our home, after all, and we're lucky to have it. <laughs> Besides, we don't have a lot of choices. She bangs a pot. We just adjust. She loves to clean. Yeah, but now we get the dust. She is a bit ah. mean. Just a human being. It could slowly, slowly wreck our dreams. Oh. He pumps some water, we hear the flow. She drops the dish, we feel the blow. It could slowly, slowly ruin our lives. Oh, hard we do just fine. They muttle the mind. I just don't hear it. I know, and there's the bind. Yet it could surely, surely drive us all insane. Or send us slowly, slowly to the grave. Maybe push us firmly, firmly to the brink. And slowly, firmly, surely wreck our dreams. Yet slowly, slowly, slowly ruin our lives. Slowly, slowly, slowly ruin our lives. Oh, don't overdo it. You know what I mean. <laughs> I risk me case. I think the boy might be gone. I haven't heard a peep out of him. Oh, that would be lovely. Do you really think he's gone? Has to be. I said I've not heard a thing from him these past two days. Oh, and Ariety none the wiser. Indeed. And good riddance to him. <laughs> now, Indeed. if you really think he's gone, does that mean you might do a little bit of borrowing? I'm oh. running awfully low on essentials. Borrowing it is, my dear. <laughs> oh, Pod. 
We have a difficult decision before us. <sighs> what decision? Well, what would happen to Ariete and me if, if you weren't here? Easy, girl. I'm as healthy as a horse. Well, all right, you're here, but what if you couldn't go borrowing? No, no. No, no, it could happen. I'd have to do it myself, but I don't think I can. Well, if it came to that, you... It is time for Arietti to learn your tricks. We don't have a son to pass your talents on to. Uh, but borrowing is men's work. Normally, yes, but we've got to face the facts. <sighs> but she's a wee girl. But what a girl. She's smart and strong, and she wants to do it. You're right. We need her to know how for her sake as well as ours. Papa? I have a big favor to ask. And what might that be? Well, you know how much I like to put everything that happens to me in my diary. Oh, yes, <laughs> we've noticed. <laughs> oh, Mama. But, so, I, I've been running out of room in my diary, and I was wondering if you could go look around when you next borrow and see if there are any loose bits of paper. Maybe we could uh, fetch some paper together? Well, you don't understand. I've looked everywhere in the storage room. There's none here at all. Oh, I think your father means something else. But I have looked, honestly. It's time you learned how to borrow. Borrow? Uh-huh. Me? Uh -huh. All right, go get your soft shoes. You'll need to be comfortable if you're going with your father. <laughs> no, don't break a leg just putting on the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Whoops. You'll need this. <gasps> now, let's talk a bit. You understand that borrowing is what keeps us alive. Yes, Papa. Well, there's a thing or two about human beings that you must keep with you always. I understand human beings are big. Mm. Well, big ain't the half of it, young lady. It's the... The connection, the link, if you get my meaning. Human beings are for borrowers. Like bread is for butter. Like steering's for rudder. I understand, Papa. Like matches for fire. I got it. And never forget it. Yes, Papa. Well, listen to your father now. Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> My darling, for your first trip, I want you to follow me. See if the human beings have left anything about that we can use. Yes, Papa, but where are you going? I'm going to sneak into the kitchen for a bit of butter. They always leave it on the counter. You stay here at the top of the ladder and keep watch. At the first sound of them, head for home. I just had to see what the outdoors is like. It's, it's wonderful. Don't move. Oh my, I've been seen. Don't move or I shall hit you with my ash stick. Do you hear me? Of course I heard you. Who couldn't with that awful loud voice? I will, you know, hit you with my stick. No, you won't. Wait, please don't run. You're right. I wouldn't hurt you. I couldn't. Then put away that stick. Oh, I will. Well, are you a fairy? <laughs> no. Are you a giant? <laughs> of course not. I'm a boy. Oh, are there many people like you? None. We're borrowers. We're all different. I don't think there are any other borrowers in the world. I'll bet you and your families are the last ones. Oh, well, that's not so. I, I didn't tell you about Uncle Henry or Aunt Lupi or Cousin Bertie. So, where are they? Well, they live two fields away beyond the spinney, and they're too far away, so we don't visit them very often. Which spinney? I don't know. One near a field called Peck and Speck near a gas pipe. I'm going home. Please don't go. Wait, I can I'll go to the field and find them. Uncle, um, Hendreary and cousin, oh, yeah, well, it was somebody, and aunt, um, uh, what's her name? Uncle Hendreary, Aunt Lupi, and cousin Bertie, will you really go? Yes. You can write a note, and I'll take you to them. Why would you do that? 
I don't know. It's Christmas time. Families ought to be together. Dear Uncle Hendreary, I hope you are well. I am well, and I am learning to borrow. Your loving niece, Arietti Clock. That should do it. How will I know if you really take it to them? It's important. It could save our race. You'll just have to trust me. If I do it, maybe you could read me a story? I bet I could do that. <gasps> Come, child, quick! But, Papa! Hush! Please don't go! I can give things for you! All sorts of things! Wait! Oh! <sighs> All right, but I'll find you. You'll see. I'll go right away. She's been in there long enough. It's been all night and all this day. She needs her supper. I said I'd let her come out when I knew how we'd handle this, this, this awful thing. What she has done is the worst a butterer can do. She's been seen. You forgot you were seen once, too. That was a long time ago. But I never struck up no conversation with the human being and all that nonsense about saving our race. I believe her part. And a letter... She wrote a letter to Uncle Hendry, and the boy said he'd deliver it. Hmm. More nonsense. No, I believe that, too. <sighs> Even if it's true, then she sealed the doom of all of them. That, that boy will good. find them, and zip, they're goners. Oh, Pod, no boy would do that. Besides, I don't think you'd let her explain everything. Explain? What's to explain? We're going to be goners, too. <sighs> the Cranferrels were talking this morning when I snuck into the living room. Oh. Did the boy tell them about us? Oh, did not sound like it. Mr. Cranfurl said that the boy was in the field calling out something that sounded like he was looking for a hen. Oh, I knew it, I knew it. He's looking for Uncle Hendry, and maybe he'll find them, and then we can meet the Hendrys and get out of this house and see the world. But Mom and Pop and I, we can go outside, and maybe, maybe we'll visit all the places I've read about. Maybe India? Or Italy? Or Spain? Or maybe, maybe I'll meet someone. I'll meet someone wonderful and handsome and just meant for me.
Let go of me, daughter. Yeah. Hold it right there. Right. Who are you and what were you doing holding my daughter? We weren't holding your daughter. Oh, Papa, he, he saved me. Uh, who? Uh, he saved you from what, exactly? He sort of, um, he, it was sort of like a Prince Charming. He saved me. <laughs> Who the devil are you and how did you get in here? Borrowers got ways. Oh, don't tell me about borrowers. Just get out. Uh, now! Mama! Ain't much for words, but I've been watching you. It looks like you broke some borrowers' laws. She been seen. You got lots of trouble. Oh, I don't know about you, but we are law-abiding borrowers. And from the looks of things, laws and soap are things you know nothing about. Oh. <laughs> did I hear you say you've been spying on us? Papa, he saved me from this giant scary rat and it was in my room and who knows what it was going to do. Rat? What rat? And what is your name? Name Spiller, and I scared it off. He did, Papa. Where are you from? Where's your home? Got no home. At least not like this. Live off the land, outside. Outside? Huh. And a good living, too. I'm certain. <laughs> outside? Then what brought you into this house? Nothing special, just curious. Nice house. That it is. Life's a bit more comfortable here on the inside, isn't it, lad? Maybe so. Anyway, I don't like the idea of being spied on, and I would appreciate it if you... Oh! Oh, my, what a rude young man. He was sort of wonderful and brave. Can't tell if we can trust someone like that, but... You could say he was brave. Only natural for a man-borrower. And he lives on the outside, like I did. Papa, you lived outside? You never told me. It wasn't for long, just one summer of my youth, when I set out on a great adventure. Wanted to find the famous secret borrower's place, Little Fordham. Where is that, Papa? Oh, Little Fordham, ha! It's one of those silly make-believe places that borrowers like to talk about. Make-believe, ha, yourself? <laughs> it's there, all right. Out there, beyond the meadows. Beyond that, maybe beyond that. My father told me about it. Oh, my mother told me about it, too, along with wood nymphs and fairies. Oh, Mama. But what's so special about this place, Papa? If Little Fordham exists... It doesn't. If Little Fordham exists, Ariety, think it was a land just for borrowers. No cats, no rats, no human beings. No human beings? Don't need them in Little Fordham. Ah, oh, pipe dream, that's what that is. Hmm. Oh. There's a place that borrowers dream about Where they never need to about food and other things they need. Little Fordham. Don't go spinning tails, Pa. You'll fill her head with nonsense. Some say it's just a myth or such. Just a wish a thing will never touch. But my heart tells me it's real and true. Little Fordham. It's a place where we all want to go, where the future is sweet and we know we'll leave cares behind, forget the time where the dreams in our hearts come alive. With its magic of kindness and love We'll erase any history of All the past hard times that we have seen We'll find joy in a dreamer's dream Some say that it's high on a mountaintop and some say it lies beneath the sea And yet I know it's waiting somewhere calling Little Fordham It's just a whisper among our clan No one here My heart says that it 
never knowing our care will have found a true dreamer's dream. If it were true, our lives would be complete. If it's not, our life is just as sweet. Not as sweet as life could be in our little fort. There's a place that borrowers dream about where they never need to worry about food and other things they need. Little Fordham. You ain't been nice, but I think this belongs to her. What's that? Saw the boy dump it into a badger set. Looked, it was gone. Went back later, it was back on the ground. Your daughter wrote what's in it, so I brought it here. Hers, oh. ain't it? Yes, that was very sweet. <laughs> well, Ariete, you're the one who reads and writes. What does this say? Papa, Mommy, he wrote, he what? wrote. What? Who wrote? Uncle Henry, that's who. I, um, I wrote him a letter and told him we were well, and he, he wrote back, see? It's sort of faint and all in capitals. Yeah. Here. Okay, wait. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a T E double L. Uh -huh. Tell mm -hmm. Y O R E. I guess he means your. <laughs> Tell your M O T H E R mother. Oh. Be all well. <laughs> what? He could use a little help with his writing. Oh, well, never mind that. What else does it say? That's it. He signed it Henry. Oh, Pa, do you know what this means? We have family, and they're alive and well! Uh, well, this could be a trick. How do we know the boy didn't write this? Oh, he has trouble reading and writing. I could tell. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, to see. What? To see if they're there in the badger's hole. Then you'll know. Oh, would you? We'd appreciate it so much. I believe they're the only family I have left, and if we could just... And I heard you talk about little Fordham. It's there, all right. <laughs> what? What did you say? Oh... It's time, I think, for us all to get a bit of sleep. But I don't understand, Papa. We haven't heard from the boy at all. Oh, you know you can't trust human beings, Ariete? And it's a long way to Peckinspeck. That is, if that spiller boy does what he said he'll do, oh, which I doubt. Can't trust some borrowers, either. I and believe Spiller will do what he says. Oh, <laughs> do you now? Oh, why? Has that boy told you something you're not telling us? Well, no, I just believe that Spiller will do whatever he said he would do. Hmm. Hmm. That boy, he's up there. Mark oh. this. He's like all boys. He sorts out Hendry, he'll sorts out us. Oh. I got another one of me feelings. And I, what? Oh. Back you! What? What? Homily, please. Uh. Hello. That's I knew switch. I'd find you. Switch. I've just come from the dollhouse. Look what I've got for you. It's the boy. I see. It's the boy. I see. Look, he's got things for us. What sort of things? All kinds of things. Go away, I don't want to sing. Go away, you're a scary thing. Please, Mama. He's a little stand you can hang your hat on. Wait, wait, wait. I don't wear a hat. I don't need a stand. Wait, wait, wait. I've got a pretty hat. I could use a stand. He's our Christmas tree. Oh! It looks too big to me. He's a lovely special one. Yes! He's a very special chair. <gasps> Take it back at once. Put it over there. If I can have a walk, you should have a chair. Sure, Papa, fair is fair. Please try it. Please keep it. No. Papa, try it out. No. Where's the hurt in trying? I don't think this is too much. I, well, all right. We'll borrow it for a while. <laughs> Good. I'd better go. I don't want Miss Cramfrill to catch me. Put back our roof. 
Oh, but not too tightly. You might want to come back and visit again soon. Oh, I will. I Homily. will. Oh, well, you might just find something that would look nice in our home. Homily, no good will come of all these, these things. Boy, what are you doing there? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, here now, boy. Watch where you're going. You nearly knocked me down. Go ah. to bed and stop your sleepwalking. Ah, despicable boy. Let me get my hands on him. to you, my love. Well, aren't we the chipper man now? Well, I've decided that all is right with the world. Eustace, my love, we're doing fine. <laughs> Taking care of old Aunt Sophie's no bother. But the boy must go. Ah, right you are, Mr. C. <sighs> when we came to this house was the dream of me life. To be lord of the manor <laughs> Just me and me wife And nobody here to set our hours Nobody here Buses or flowers <laughs> And Sophie confined to her bed as long as the old lady's fed, we do what we like, and we like what we do, and nobody <laughs> says, <"Woo." laughs> It's a sweet life, don't you fret. <laughs> it's a sweet life, me little pet. Living, Living it together, just, just you and I. Of what our life was before Living in Liverpool Without so much as a farthing We had to scrimp And then finally run It was a rough life But now it's a sweet life Don't you fret It's a sweet life Me little pets Living it together But still got our due Made up some references That nobody knew <laughs> Now we're so much better We're no more the debtor It's a sweet life <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
catch him in the act. He'll be off on a train and he'll never come back. You're so right. <laughs> Sweet dream. Oh, yeah. Sweet life, yes. But now the task at hand is to catch that boy at something mischievous and get him out of here. Right you are, Mrs. C. I don't like him moping around. I saw him yesterday whispering to the walls and the floorboards all over the house. Caught him at that, too. I swear it was him I heard last night getting up out of bed and prowling the house. Last night? Well, I didn't hear a thing. My dear husband, you sleep like a dead man. Well... So what if I do? Why didn't you get up to well, see what he was about? I was too tired, what with keeping oh. this house in order and taking care of old Aunt Sophie uh. and uh, cleaning up after the boy. And if he's at it again tonight? Well, don't you worry. I'll be right behind him. <laughs> you do that, Mrs. C. Mm -hmm. You do that. But don't wake me unless he leads you to your filthy vermin. Uh, scoff, Mr. C., but mark my words, I... Oh, well, never mind. But the boy needs straightening. Uh, nothing that a good whipping wouldn't cure. <laughs> well, my darling Fred, we can't lay a hand on him, what with his illness and all. Oh, Eustace, my love, he'll get well one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> You gave me quite a fright. If you would please knock or something the next time. <laughs> Got um, something for you. Oh, oh, no more furniture, please. The boy's given us plenty already. This be better. Oh, my. Hey. Um. <gasps> Aunt Luffy? Henrietta! Uncle Henry! Is that cousin Bernie? Eglantina! Eglantina, I thought you were. were Pet my cat! <laughs> well, she wasn't. That cat was easy to fool. Almost got caught, but I got away. I don't think we need to talk about that. Of course we do, Arietta's dying to know. Please tell us, please. Well, I ran off just about the time we were to emigrate out of here. Poor child. Couldn't stand the thought of leaving. It was time to leave. There was nothing left here for us. Oh, well, it's too bad you left so soon. Things have worked out rather well. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> so I see. Oh, fancy oh, my. things. Oh. <laughs> my, my. Well, Arietti, oh. I was out front in front of the front door when this giant country cat sneaked up on me. He grabbed me by the neck. Oh, that's mm. the story we heard. Yes. But I did an Irish jig to distract that cat. <laughs> <laughs> she did, and then had Dreary save the day by throwing a cheese ball at the cat. She <laughs> dropped her, and we ran. <laughs> but you never came back to tell us. We didn't have time, my dear. We were off by moonlight to our next home. Hendrary, pardon my good fellow! <laughs> the whole family? Here is a sight for sore eyes. What a strange time. First the boy, then still learn the letter. Now, here you all are! Mm. Amazing! We are here indeed. We just couldn't stay away. The spiller's story about what happened with the boy sent me into apoplexy! Oh, oh awful, awful! Shattered me! Can't say I approve of talking to no human being. Against all borrowers' laws, you know. 
I agree with you, Hendry, but children these days have little respect for the old ways. Well, now the boy's been very good to us. And he's kept his word. So he has. So he has. No human being should be talked to by a borrower. When do I meet him? <laughs> no, I'll do no such thing. We'll have no truck with befriending human beings. All right, enough talk about the boys. We should be celebrating. It's been so long since we were all together. Now, we ladies will see if we can find some treats, and you girls look for the best china. <laughs> I've been saving something for just such an occasion. Ah. Ha ha. Henry. Now, don't laugh when I say this. That spiller. Well, he says little Fordham is really out there. Ah, he does indeed. Says he can take us to it. Independent youngster. But do you trust him? Well, so far he's been honest, but tricky. Very tricky. Mm. Spiller, come join us. It's a beautiful evening, and all because of you. Nah, don't mean much to me. I just wanted to see if there was really there. Mm. You can't trust human beings no matter what you think. I trust the boy. Uh, you'd be making a mistake. Foolishness, all that hugging and dancing. It's fun. Mm. What do you know? Don't need nobody at all. What do you care? Don't need nobody at all. Don't need a mother, never felt one. Don't need a father, never knew one. Don't need nobody at all, me, I'm independent. Always on my own, as long as I remember. On my own, since I was young and tender. Don't need a mother, never felt one. Don't need a father, never knew one. Don't need nobody at all, me, I'm independent. Live off the land and things I can borrow. Live for today, heck with tomorrow. Don't need a buddy, never met one. Don't need a girl, never break one. Ha. What does she know? I'm independent. I don't need something I don't know about. I don't need something I have lived without. I don't want to feel what I don't understand. I don't want my life to get out of hand. But what do you know? I'm Wanna go where I go, wanna do what I do, wanna know what I know, I'm independent. Wanna go where I go, wanna do what I do, wanna know. What was all that about? The spiller wouldn't join us. Well, he lives on the outside. Outside's easy for him. Inside's different. You can't tie a creature like that down. Yes, probably. I mean it. A strange one. Hendry thinks the lad knows the whereabouts of little Fordham. Maybe so, but I just wish Spiller... Ah, oh, now, Arietti. Enjoy the party. This is a special time. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are together at this special time of year, sharing joys of the season with those we hold so dear, raising a toll. To Christmas, to praise the newborn king. May he bless. 
bless all of our tomorrows with challenges they bring. Let bells ring out, let voices raise in songs of joy, it's Christmas. Let snow come down, let children play and dream of Christmas Day. The fire crackles, the yule hogs lit, the table groans, all oh, with food and wit. <laughs> the heart beats warm as we pause to bless our family near, our family dear. It's Christmas. It's The candy's cold, even gumdrops, the joyful glow that fills the room is our family near, our family dear. It's Christmas! Ah! Mr. C, Mr. C, it's gone, it's gone! Oh my, oh my, oh my! Oh no, no, for heaven's sake, Eustace! Calm yourself. <laughs> what? What's gone? My watch. My special watch. My beautiful. Oh, it's that boy! Now, I just now, know now, it. Now, now, control yourself. You probably just misplaced it. Uh, we'll find a way to get rid of that boy. Watch or no watch. Well, I bet he took it. Oh, now, don't fret so. Get into the spirit of the season. Season? Ha! Here we are together at that special time of year, sharing joys of the season with the one I hold so dear. Well, aren't we the sentimental devil? But that boy, I am going to... Let bells ring out, let voices raise in the songs of joy. Christmas. Let snow come down in buckets. Oh. Let children play with muskets and dream of Christmas Day. Oh, I'll give that boy something to dream oh, about. Oh, Eustace. The bells ring out. The yule logs lit. The table grows. With food and wit. The, the heart, heart beats hard as, as we pause to It's Christmas! It's Christmas! Let music sound, let laughter flow in all our hearts. It's Christmas! Let dreams come now, the tree shines bright with a special light. The wine is warm.
we've got so much to talk about. You've been outside and there about. I've been inside and can't get out. I feel like girls. What's going on out there? I hope that's not a light I see. I think it's clear. Oh dear. They're probably asleep. Counting their sheep. Light a little candle. We'll brighten up the room. Light a little candle. Pretend it's time. You're so much It's been grand seeing you, lad, but he thinks it's a bit late for house calls. Come back tomorrow. Oh, Pod, where are your manners? We owe him. But it's late. <coughs> oh, well then, meet Loopy and Hendry and Cousin Birdie. Hello. Thanks to you and young Spiller, they've come for a visit. Ah, that's good. How do you do? Who's Spiller? I'd be oh. Spiller. Oh, the lad just keeps popping up. It's good to meet you. Huh, maybe. There are a lot more of you than I thought. See, told you. Well, this is all very nice, but maybe you could be shutting our roof so we can get some sleep. Oh, I will. In a minute. I've got a few things for you, though. Oh, Loopy, isn't that marvelous? Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, good, he's got more things for us. We don't need more things. Husband, you might speak up. We could use some things. We could use what he brings. Uh, yes, yes, she's right. We have no way to carry things. Maybe something small, uh, like rings. Oh, that would be good. <laughs> Here's a pretty postage stamp. Uh, what? A stamp? See? Ooh. Here's a brand new thimble. Oh, oh no, my. This, this is not this. Is, oh. Oh. Here's a small new diary. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Enough, my lad. Enough. But I can get so much more for your home under the floor. Here now. <gasps> What's no. going on? <laughs> what deviltry, boy? <laughs> what are you? Ah. Better run.
something, something. A nest, a nest, they're alive and squeaky. I saw them, I did, I did, I did. They're frightful and watchful, distasteful and skillful. They're vermin and vermin are they dead. Well, it sounds more like mice to <laughs> me. But we should call somebody. Yes, uh, yes, we. Here, I'll stir them up with this <laughs> poker. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Well, if anything was there, it's gone now. <laughs> I can't see anything. There's hundreds and thousands, they're alive and squeaky. I saw them, I did, I did, I did. They're crafty and cunning, some crawling, some running, disgusting, revolting, conniving and molting. They're burning. I want them to! Oh, oh. Eustace, you're having Dad. a nightmare. No, Fred. Oh. Save, oh. save oh. me, Fred. Oh. They're real. Oh. They're real. Back to bed They're with you. They're real. Oh. I saw them. I saw them. Oh. They're there. They're it's, it'll there. be all right, dear. All right. <laughs> They're there. Will be heartbroken. Oh, I'm here too. I'm so sorry for what happened. I didn't mean to. And, oh, never I mind. Now we'll just have to emigrate outside. No. Oh. Did you hear that, <gasps> Mama? Oh my God, Eglantina, go get Uncle Henry quick. <gasps> oh my. Oh, oh my. Oh. Dear. Someone hand me the thimble. I'll go get some water. Good idea. Loopy, my darling, can you open your eyes? Tell me you're all right. Please, Mama, please. Oh, 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 okay. oh thank heaven above. We're going to get you something to drink. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh. Oh, I know, sip. I know. Here we go. Sip some of this. Let me look, let me look. Okay. Can you point your toe? Uh, I can, but it hurts. I can't tell for sure, but I think she's just been bruised by you. Oh. Can you bend it? Oh. Oh. No. It's been my experience, you won't be able to walk on it for days, but oh. it don't appear broken. Oh, you see, Lupi, isn't that good? You'll be better in no time, and, and then we'll be off to little Fordham. <laughs> oh, this is no time for spinning tails. But a homily, a spiller is gonna take us there. Oh, I can't believe that oh, you believe. I believe in it. I do. I have to. It's there, all right. <laughs> Let it be. Little Fordham or no little Fordham, we have to get her out of this room before that hateful lady comes back. I don't think she can walk, Pop. No. I could hold her in my hand no. and sneak her out of the house. You could meet me in the garden. Not so easy, my lad. Our only way out is through the house. We'd be seen. Well, we've got to think of something. Old Miss Crampfurl is going to call someone to find you out. Look, the best you can do is to close the floor and listen to what's said. Then come back and tell us. We'll make our plans when we know what's to happen. Hurry along now. All right. I'll be back. <laughs> Arietti, Eglantina, comfort Lupi while we come up with the plan. Homily, we're done for here. Oh. Mrs. Cranfurl will be back with who knows what to get rid of us. Oh, I know what you're going to say, but I can't emigrate. This is our home. There. We've lost our cushion bed. Have to sleep on leaves instead of warm and comfy down. They've spoiled our handmade clothes and added insult to our woes, calling us mice who always drown. Oh, there is one thing that we've got, what they probably have not. We've 
God love. They'll push us from the we'll world live we as love best we can and send us outside. up to the world above the floorboards where we're not supposed to be. Think about the bright side. The bright we side. made the silly asses miss their tea. <laughs> And there is one thing that we've got What they probably have not I've got you got me We've got love Oh, you can talk of love all you want But that will not put a roof over our heads or feed us We need them, Pod We need them like bread is for butter Like steering Don't cry, <laughs> homily our future is a model, we'll land in a puddle. Who will keep us dry and warm? Can we survive with just each other? Now Arietti needs her mother I'll do my best. to be brave and strong in the storm. We'll find another home. A perfect place for you and me. Leave it to Pod to find out how, my love. And there is one thing that we've got, something they have probably not. We've got love. We've got love. At your side, I will be. Love will see us through. You'll see. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about your hurt, Aunt Loopy. Papa says she won't be able to walk alone for a few days. I don't think we got a few days. That's the heart of it. I got another one of me feelings. When morning comes, trouble comes. So what can we do? Uh, uh, best we move everyone into Arietti's bedroom. Oh, in case they open the floor. They can't see us in there. Good thinking, that. But, but what about Loopy? I don't think we can move her. It'll make her leg worse. What's worse is what we'll all be if they find us. We can be her legs. We can carry her like we was crutches. Oh, that's good. That's good. There's no going back now. We're leaving. When? Oh, I'm afraid that depends on the boy. Now, Loopy, my love, Spiller and I are going to have to lift you up to get you out of here. It may hurt a bit, but we've got to escape. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I can. Yes, you can. There's nothing for you to do. We'll do it all. Oh, please be careful. Easy now. We need to keep Barry quiet in case they open the floor. Homily, you and I best go back into the kitchen and see what we can salvage. We'll need... Food, cups, maybe a knife, anything. Isn't this exciting, eh, Quintina? Oh, yes. I was so worried for Mama, but Spiller's clever. He's kind of cute, too. Oh, I hadn't noticed. What's he doing now? Oh, picking things up and looking at you. Don't be silly. See for yourself. <laughs> Don't know what's the matter. Don't understand this feeling. Don't know what it's all about. What makes him so appealing? Can't stop checking, is she okay? Can't stop thinking, maybe someday. She's pretty, she's a girl.
knows about things I don't. He does crazy things I won't. She's soft, she's a girl. He's strong. He's a boy. I wish I could. knows about things I don't. He does crazy things I want. She's soft, she's a girl. He's strong. He's a boy. I wish Homily, my love, we need to sleep in shifts. Who knows what news the boy will bring us? I'll take the first watch. Girls, come help me comfort Aunt Luffy. Good you called the constable. Well, I, uh, of course I was right to call the constable. That boy's a thief. He's not to leave his room. Look, look. Oh, I don't know what could have possessed the boy. <sighs> Building a little house under the floorboards and stealing a watch to hang on the wall. Well, that's not the half of it. Look at all these dollhouse things. He had no right to any of this. Oh, well, we'll let the police handle it. Duh. Ooh, that boy may have have built that that playhouse, but something else is down there. Well, I told you, Mrs. C, I didn't see anything down there, not even a mouse. Well, I did, and I can't sleep another night in this house until it or them is gone. So, I've taken care of it. What does that mean? <laughs> Ah, thank you for coming, Constable. You know my husband. We've met. I came as you requested. Now, about the boy. I've already told you the whole story. I just want something done about it. That boy. Show him the watch the boy stole. Uh, so this is where you found the watch? Yes, right there. Looks like a pile of junk to me. Well, well, it was neither before. I stirred before. it up when I took those things out of it. It was rather nice before, sort yeah. of a dollhouse. Mm. Uh, uh, the boy stole all sorts of things to hide down there. Now, the missus is convinced that it's filled with 
Little vermin dressed in doll's clothing. <laughs> doll's clothing? Ah, that should be one of my other surprises. Ah, good evening. Vicar, thank you for coming. I know that you're busy. God's work is not moved by the dictates of time. Tell me what you spoke of. What is all this? A bit of insurance to make sure there's not some sort of evil presence down there. Constable, uh, Mr. Cranfer. Uh, hmm. Interesting gentleman. Mm. I am here to pray away whatever is there. Come right in. Follow me. Ma'am, you called for an exterminator, and here I be with my hose and special gases. What needs he limb here, nation? Right this way. Good Lord, Mrs. C. Oh, I beg your pardon, Vicar. <laughs> what is the need of the exterminator? Well, if they're not spirits, they're flesh and blood. And then the exterminator will take care of them, hmm? An exterminator! Hurry with the packing! What are we looking for, Papa? Anything we, worth saving we can carry, we have to bring. Hurry! <laughs> Luffy's fallen asleep so I can help. Thanks, Aunt Ernie, but don't waste any time now. They'll soon be looking in here again. We gotta hurry. That exterminator knows his job. But what's an exterminator? Let me tell you, he is someone to fear. He eliminates things. Right you are, Henry. His kind sent down cats or ferrets to catch the likes of us. Oh, how awful. Oh, our family has had his moments with cats, if you remember. Oh, yes. Enough of this. Me back is up. How dare that crazy woman treat us like this? This is my house. My house for my family. Brave words, Mr. Clock. Waste of time. Is that so? They don't use cats or ferrets hardly anymore. Didn't you talk about hoses and gaseous? Of course we did. Then my experience that what comes out of those hoses kills you. <gasps> All of us. And me too. Oh, we're really going to die! Oh, dear, oh, dear, not no, die! Not no, die? No, no, not if I can help him, we're not. We just need a plan. Reverend, Constable, Mr. Cramferl. So, what have we here? Some sort of viper's nest? Well, we're uncertain, but the sight of it has taken its toll on the missus. Oh, what I have been through would try a saint. Well, not that I'm saying I'm a saint, vicar. You have my sympathy, Mrs. Cramper. Yes, but that was last night. This is a new day, and there is work to be done. Now, I want to know how each of you gentlemen can help set things straight again. Between that that thieving boy and, and those those things down there, I am at my wit's end. Ugh. What to do, what to do, what to do, what to do when crooks and thieves lurk by. Depend on the constable and why. Cause I've the might to set it right. Crooks and thieves, no, I'm ready to fight. That's what to do, call me. That's who. What to do, what to do, what to do. What to do when spirits run amok. Lean on me, the vicar, for I'll erase with prayer what's underneath the floor. You'll have tranquility and peace once more, so that's what to do. Call me. That's who. Let me see the evidence. Aha! The boy must have put these there. Can rightly say it's thievery as such. Yet punishment is due. This is just too much. Stand aside, I'll pray right at the spot. Oh, Heavenly Father, save this lot. Send the spirits back beneath the floor. Away from the house to be seen no more. What to do, what to do, what to do? When vermin are crawling underfoot, call the exterminator and I'll put all those beasties out of misery. Just a sniff of gas, no butchery. So move over, lads, let me have my fun. My pretty little hose will do the trick. The vermin will sniff my sweet, sweet gas, and the vicar can say the very 
Come down here now, you hear me? Now. I've got something outside for the young man. A pair of handcuffs, I trust. <laughs> no, no, it's something I use when questioning youngsters. It always works. I think it's best that I begin my prayers. Oh, by all means, Vicar. The sooner we get this over with, the sooner life will return to normal. And do pray. Now! Oh. There'll be no collecting things from this house. No, you don't. <coughs> what in heaven's name? Trust me, Mrs. Cramfurl. Hair brained, if you ask me. Sit down, boy, and listen to the constable. Do get on with it, constable. I want some justice before I decide to turn the exterminator loose to do his work. Hello, young man. I understand we have a bit of a misunderstanding. We do? Don't be coy, young man. It's all right, Mrs. Cramferl. He's just a bit confused. <laughs> now, son, tell us all about the nice watch in the little house under the floor. If you tell me the truth, this balloon is yours to keep. Speak when you're spoken to. Wait, Mrs. Cramferl. Now, let me help you. You came into this house from far away, India, I'm told. And you were lonely. Yes, sir? Good. Now we're making progress. You needed friends, someone to play with. Yes, sir. So you made this little house under the floor and decorated it with all sorts of things you took from the house. Well, stole! Well, borrowed! Oh. Did you plan to return them? Yes. Well, I guess I could Let, Let's agree that you borrowed them. Now they can be returned and no harm done. Now, what? just a minute. Let's not let the boy off the hook that easily. That's right. That's up to you. But it's to his credit that he's telling us what happened. As for your little friends, whatever they might be, you made them up, didn't you? Well, I... They were... <laughs> yes, I made them up. Ah, liar! Enough of this. It's your turn. I know there's something down there. And it's not something the boy made up. And it's not ghosts. Move aside, Vicar. Well, I must say, you asked me to. It's time for the exterminator to earn his keep. Thank you for coming, Vicar. Now, this is most unusual. That may be, but I know what's best at this juncture. Exterminate! <laughs> Let me just set up my equipment. <laughs> when the hose goes in, they'll be dead and gone. Won't even see it coming. Newfangled stuff. It does smell a little, though. I bid you good day, ma'am! What more can I do, Mrs. Cramfer? Oh! You and that idiotic balloon! <laughs> Go and catch that lying thief and bring him back here. No, now just a bit, Mrs. C. Why not let the boy be? Well, just, just for the moment. He's cooked as goose while he'll be sent packing in the morning. No, Mr. C. We'll get him now. I want my hands on him. I'll come too. Love the hunt. What about that, that machine? It'll turn off when the juice runs out. It'll have done its job by then. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> 
smell that, everybody? We have to get out of here, quick! Comedy, grab something, cloth, anything. Maybe we can plug up that hose. Hurry, woman. Oh, oh dear, is this your plan? It'll do until one comes along, hurry. No, that'll only delay it. We have to get out now. You're right, we have to go. How will we get out? Let's make a run for it, let's move. Oh, we're really going to die. No, Eglin, Tina, stop it. The boy can help us. He's run off there, Yeti, that's the truth of it. Now our only chance is to take our chances through the grate. Inside. Oh, you can do this, Harmony. You can do this. Oh, dear. Henry, that's it. That's it. God willing, he knows what he's doing. I'm so crap in here. you are. You've caused a real commotion. I'm to take you back to Mrs. Cramfurl. I won't go. Now, now, be reasonable. You can't really get away. Be a man. Be responsible for your deeds. If I come with you, can I have the balloon? Now? Well, of course you can. All right. Give it to me, please. Uh, your word now. Don't worry. I'll come with you. Oh, oh good. You caught him. I'll come with you, but they won't. Wait, wait, don't let him do that. They're, get out of my way, you fool. They're in there. Ah! What's in where? They're in there, they're in there. The basket, you fool, the basket. Oh! You are going to regret this, young man. It's back to India for you. I don't care. No. I don't care. Oh. You've lost, Miss Cranfurl. Oh. You've lost. Oh. And they're real. 